Hello there, Ray here. And over the course of the last eight months of 1.19 snapshots, I've designed farms and machines for every single new item and mob. Plus, I upgraded my old farms to use the new features so they're more efficient. Let's take a look at my world where I have all the different types of farms and machines. And if you use any of my contraptions, make sure to give me credit as I put over a thousand hours into this. And if you know of anybody that could use a farm, be sure to mention me and my spreadsheet where I have every single item in the game in Minecraft and how you can farm it up. Let's take a look at one of the most productive farms of 1.19 new farms. That is the Skulk Blocks, Veins, Sensor, Shrieker, and XP farm. This is the farm here, and you can see there's not much to it. We got a little spot down at the bottom where the player AFKs, and this is in the Ender Mansion where we have a Enderman farm at the top with the Endermen going down this little tube, and they are dying right here. If you AFK this farm just with a normal hole breaking the skulk blocks, you will get XPs while AFK just having the left mouse button held down. This farm will be great when they eventually do remove pigmen from dropping XPs just for being aggroed and not actually being killed by the player. In the meantime, it works great just for AFKing and getting XPs without having to use an auto clicker. Now if you go ahead and use a silk touch, you will get the actual block forms. If you aim down here, you'll get the skulk blocks as their items, and you also get veins that are produced at the bottom sides of these shriekers and on the other sides of blocks. This farm also produces shriekers. If you just aim a little bit higher, you end up mining up all the shriekers as well as skulk sensors that are produced. All the loot's being collected and put down into these chests here. You can see the ratio of getting different types of blocks. The skulk blocks are great for storing XP and for looks. The veins are great for adding extra texture onto blocks. The shrieker are great aesthetics and they make noise. And the sensors are great for a lot of different automatic farms which I'll show you later in the video. Next up is one of your guys' most favorite, that is my warden farm. These things also produce catalyst, here it is. We can see we got a nice little platform up here for the worm to spawn in, a drop down chute, and we have a killing chamber down there. You do have to build this with a actual naturally generated shrieker, so one that actually comes from a deep dark, not one that you placed. And after it shrieks four times, every time afterwards, it will produce a warden up above us. So you can see I'm getting the darkness effect, and there is a warden. He looks kind of funny because the floor is so thin, but he's spawned up, and he's going to be washed with the water up above. And he falls straight down all the way to the very bottom where we have a killing chamber of a bunch of minecarts with a wither rose just to do some extra damage. And when the warden dies, the loot is collected and they drop catalysts. And these blocks produce an insane amount of XPs being 15 each so you can easily get to level 30. You can also use a catalyst for aesthetics and you can use a warden to make some crazy kind of fighting pits. It also runs 24-7 if you shoot an arrow on top of the shrieker and then you activate a piston nearby. Now every time the arrow goes up and down, it'll be just like the player shot the shrieker and the warden will be spawned from it. You can see how it spawns in the water and actually walks on top and then falls down through it. When it falls through, it actually hits a tripwire here, which activates this redstone, allowing it to continue on and on forever. This actually does work 24 seven inside of loaded chunks. So like in spawn chunks or with my portal chunk loaders. This command block here just proves that the warden's able to spawn no matter where you're at. And it produces 200 wardens and catalysts per hour. Next is a frog light farm using spawners. These are over in the nether dimension where you have spawners are part of bastions and you just build this farm. They spawn, they fall down, they break into smaller ones and then you put in frogs down in the bottom. Just let them free roam and once they split down to little ones, the frogs will slurp them up and produce the frog lights. Those are all being collected by the minecarts and then being put in this chest over here. And you can get all three different types depending on which color frogs you have inside, which are a great source of light and fit different color palettes for different builds. With a single spawner, you will get this many items per hour, about 1,900 frog lights and about 180 magma cream. I also have a second version of the farm where when they spawn, they don't immediately die, but then they move towards the iron golem and then get split by the powder snow and then are slurped up with these frogs and minecart, making the collection system a little bit smaller. I also have a frog light farm or the basalt biome. The farm is built just above the bedrock or on bedrock addition, you could put it below it. There's a bunch of spawning spaces for magma right here and the player would AFK above it so that they can only spawn within the farm. While you're AFKing it, they're spawning down below and they're making their way towards the center because they see the iron golem in there. 
what they end up doing is then being inside the power of snow, freezing, and then they turn into little ones and they get slurped up with the frogs that we have here in the boats. And then all their loot is within range of the hopper minecart to pick up and transport it over to the chest over here. Just like the other ones, depending on what type of frogs you have inside the system will determine what type of frog lights you'll get out of it. And after AFKing for one hour, you get all these items. We also got some new vegetation with the mangrove proper gule farm. I have a couple of different variations of it. This one is a simple AFK for the player. Bone milling the leaves will produce uh, proper gules. A dispenser underneath that, bone milling the proper gule will change it from the youngest age to the full size one, which you can break off and get picked up by the hopper and put into here as the new item. There's not much to this thing, just an on off switch and dispensers, which at bone mill, they hook up to any one of these bone mill farms. I also have an infinitely automatic design right here, which has three dispensers all pointing to the center, and that way it grows up faster. Also got this automatically breaking it off, so you don't have to do anything, and you get tons and tons of these. And if you build it inside of spawn chunks or loaded chunks, it could run 24 7. I also designed it so that they should work on bedrock edition. Lastly, we have one that uses less bone mill, as all you really need to do is bone mill the leaf, and then that will start the propagule, but then it can grow into the full size by itself. This way it only costs you one bone mill to do each propagule, and every time it grows, we're counting it with the hoppers in the back, and once it reaches six updates, it will automatically break it off and be stored in this chest right here. No bone mill is wasted when they're constantly running either. And proper cues are handy for our next farm, which is the mangrove tree farm. This is the automatic mangrove tree farm. It's very similar to my azalea one. The way you actually plant it is the player will sit down inside of this hole over here and the player will be having some propagules in their hand. And then you'll aim up at this stair up here on the edge of the stair and you just hold down a right click. And once the door opens, the player will plant in a propagule. The machine will automatically bone mill it then it will move all the roots upwards so they're no longer warlogged and then the TNT destroys it and you get all the items which get put down into each of these three little holes which then all makes its way down into this chest here. The entire thing is quite simple and it only gets kind of complicated due to a problem where the roots will be converted from flowing water into waterlogged when the tree grows into this. And you have the option to go ahead and place in TNT dupers if you want to if you don't want to use tons of TNT. Mangrove logs are needed to make the majority of the new blocks. I'll eventually make a mangrove leaf farm, like my azalea one, but in the meantime, you can just harvest the leaves on this one. Mud is another new block that can be farmed up to get mud bricks and also clay. I have this automatic farm to let you get all of it in one continuous system. The player just AFKs this minecart, aiming at this corner of the block right here, with the right click button held down. Everything else is done automatically, including resupplying the player with more azalea bushes. So it's an infinitely automatic farm. When the bushes are planted, they are automatically bone milled up and then they are destroyed using two TNT dupers. The loot's all collected down below. But in order to get the mud, what we actually do is have a stone generator that pushes in stone. Then the stone is converted with the moss that's nearby. And then once azalea tree is grown on top, it will convert the moss into rooted dirt. And then after the moss, it turns to a rooted dirt. It gets pushed over here. And in this spot is where the rooted dirt then gets placed with a dispenser and water bottle and it will convert it into mud. The mud is then pushed down and over here into this little area where endermen can reach it. And they spawn on this platform and they fall into some cobwebs and they're mad at this endermite. In the meantime, they'll grab nearby blocks such as mud or if you put some dripstone points underneath of it, it can dry out into clay. And after picking these blocks up, they hold them in their hands and they will fall with them all the way down here, we have some dripstone points, which will kill them. Upon death, they drop ender pearls, but they also drop the blocks that they're holding, which then gets stored in this chest here. So you can automatically get clay and mud, all while AFKing. And you can even take that clay and put it into a furnace, cook it down with the azalea fuel to get terracotta, and turn that into glazed terracotta, all without having to do any mining. And I have supportive farms alongside, like my moss farm here, which produces the infinite amount of bone meal needed for this farm. Plus there's other byproducts like getting cobblestone as well as all the wood and logs from the trees. Despite it being slow, it still produces 400 clay or mud per hour. Now in order to get the packed mud, you do have to craft mud with wheat. 
The packed mud is used in order to get the mud bricks. So I went ahead and designed a simple little wheat farm which will collect wheat off of these villagers and it puts it all down here into a chest where you can gather it. There's also an on and off switch for all the minecarts. There's also tons of unique goat horns so I made a goat horn farm. Over here is a goat farm where they spawn in naturally. If you remove all your passive mobs from your spawn chunks and then kind of build this in a location that's isolated. Otherwise you could come in and just breed up goats in a little pen like this having a ceiling so they can't jump out. And once you have enough goats in there you can open up this gate and flood this area to push them all to the corner. Then the goat will randomly then try to hit this armor stand, miss it, and actually hit the wall over here. And the horns will be picked up with the hopper and put into the storage chest. And then it will drop into the next level with only one horn, which I'll use to ram once again and lose its horn and get collected once again. And then the now hornless goat will be killed off. If you want to, you can use those ones to then breed more with horns. And there is a total of eight different types of horns with different noises if you right click them. The entire thing is quite simple with no redstone. And the rates depend on how many goats you have. We also have new item sorters using the Alley mob. I got two different designs here. We got one that is nice, simple, and tileable, where we have three Alleys all lined up in a row right over this water stream. And what you do is you drop your items in to the water stream and they're close enough where they can all pick it up. So with this tile ball design, there is three allays and then there's a row of wool to keep them separate. And then they pull their items out of the water stream and then put them into the chest just underneath of them. The next design I got over here is a bit more compact. So it's a little bit more complicated. Here we actually have nine allays all in a three by three area, super compact listening to this nearby note block and they're all able to reach this water stream if the items are placed in the center of it and just like the other ones they'll pick it up and those will get put down into these chests. I designed these item sorters so that you can put these into your current storage system as these actually go above your ceiling. So you can have like all your storage on the walls with chest and then you can put in this new one in the ceiling and just put it low enough so you can actually reach each of the individual chest. The cool thing about these sorters is they can sort out any type of item, even non-stackables. And you can actually use a lot of allays. That's because in 1.19.1 that came out with allay duplication. And I actually designed this farm here for that version. Where you just start out with a allay inside of a boat here. And then we can AFK it to get as many as you need. All you need to do is have some shards in your offhand. And then you just AFK by holding right click. This will remove the music disc from the jukebox and then place it back in again. That way the lays will then start to dance and then your player will also come across and give them some amethyst shards. This is what they need in order to duplicate. And with just a simple setup you can get around 100 allays in one hour of a ping. All the extra allays that come duplicated off of these guys will then leave the boat and then move up to the scaffolding and be up here for you to easily grab them and put them into whatever item sorter they want to use. Including sorting the totems of undying from my raid farm or from bartering farms, or from AFK fish farms, the possibilities are endless. Chest boats are also a new thing in 1.19, and they can be used in a lot of cool ways like splitting many items through several hoppers into many different types of containers. So if I just put a bunch of moss blocks in here, you can see that it fills all these composters up, and all the bone mill will end up in this one single chest boat. You can also do the same thing with smelting, put in all your items at the top, and then it puts it into all the different types of furnaces and once melted puts it into a single place to grab it. If you really want to go crazy you can go with this setup of mine where I have 33 hoppers pointing into a single chest so you can fill it up extremely fast. But when it comes to pulling out you have nine hoppers here that can put it into different containers. You can even do some really strange stuff like this where all the water bottles are placed into a single chest above here and you can see how fast it sucks them all out. Then in this medium chest boat if you place the blaze it all goes into the appropriate location and in this one here you place in whatever you want to get brewed up because this all goes into brewing stands and because this divides each of the items up equally you can actually have all the items go into the appropriate brewing stands. You can see we also got the blaze rods in there and all the water bottles very easily easily but it does still take a bit of redstone in order to get all the water bottles out and in order to put in some new ones but some pretty cool stuff you could do with them and just like the other ones you can collect all the outputs at the single chest boat at the very bottom. Skulk sensors have many cool uses including for seeker activation with this simple redstone setup right here 
it's possible to have things only activate for certain vibrations like this door only opens up if I walk but if I change it to something else in here like eat and now if I walk it doesn't open up but if I eat it opens up. You could do some really cool traps or secret entrances that are only activated when certain things are done all just by using this little redstone contraption and a book with 15 pages. The sensors can also be used to determine where something occurs in two dimensions or three dimensions. So it says it's over there. Now it says it's over there. Sensors can also be used to send wireless signals up to eight blocks away. And here you can see how it loops around. Plus you could just use the sensors for their aesthetic looks when they get vibrations. By far the best old farm that could be updated to using the new stuff is my AFK fish farm with treasure loot using the skulk sensor. This little thing isn't too big but has a skulk sensor to detect exactly when the player catches a fish which means it's 100% efficient not only for fishing but also for getting the super nice loot which is considered the treasure loot. You just AFK by holding right click right here and every time a fish bites it automatically lets you reel in and reel out for the next one. Great way to get XP's and tons of loot which gets stored in this chest over here including all the different types of enchanted books that you can get with it as well as some loot ends up over here. I must have farm for any survival world. Now let's take a look at the cool things you could do with the waterlogged mangrove roots. Smaller cobble gens can be made using the waterlogged mangrove root. Here is a little teeny one that I made, which just has the water there, the lava, and this is where the cobble's made. And if we go ahead and break the cobble, you'll see that every time one's produced, it automatically pushes it, and it's super small. I also inserted this into my automatic cobble pathway maker, which all you have to do is AFK here and hold down a lava bucket up against the stair, and you can AFK that as long as you want to produce as big of pathway that you need. This also makes my flying machine that has a rail duper. So you actually get not only a cobble walkway, but also an infinite roller coaster on top of it. And this design is even slightly smaller than my basalt variations of these. And you just AFK with rails offhand and lava facing down this way. And you just hold down a right click. Pretty awesome little machine doesn't take a whole lot. And it also powers all the rails. Mob head auto farms also could upgrade with the skulk sensors. Here it is, it's currently in a couple different pieces, but I will eventually finish it. Now let's take a look at the how do we get here advancement machine. The new shrieker is also used in the how do we get here advancement. So I updated my how do we get here setup, which is great for servers so they can easily help their fellow mates in order to get this advancement. With the newest part being the shrieker being placed in the floor and the player just has to walk across it during the later stages of getting the advancement. My underload farms also get an upgrade with 1.19. Let's go into that world to see the improvements. In this world, I have the mini underload placed into different biomes, producing eight farms with different loots. If placed inside the nether waste biome with the large size portals, you will get the ghast, magma cubes, zombified piglins, endermen, and piglins. They spawn in and then immediately teleport to the overworld where they die inside my killing chamber and drop their respected loot. If built inside of a crimson forest, you get hoglins as well as piglins and zombified piglins, producing tons of raw pork. But if you put light beside the portal, it's too bright for the piglins and zombified piglins to spawn in, and instead you'll just get hoglins. Then quickly kill them with fire on the overall side will produce cooked pork, a great food source. And if instead you want not the hoglins, but the zombified piglins for all their gold, build it in the same biome, but having blocks beside each portal will prevent the big hoglins from spawning in. And you'll just get the zombified piglins as well as the piglins. Doing this in a normal nether waste will now also get you endermen, which is not desirable. Having the same farm but instead of a warped forest will produce just endermen. So you can actually make a nether endermen farm. If placed inside of a soul sand valley we get tons of gas and skeletons and some endermen. Making a nice afk way to get bones. And if in the same biome but instead we put light beside it, we can prevent skeletons and endermen from spawning and just get gassed making a very effective gas tier and gunpowder farm. And if you place the same farm inside of a basalt delta, you can get gas and magma cubes. But if you make the portal shorter, you can just get magma cubes and a lot of them, which can be another way to get tons of frog legs. My nether fortress farms with nether portals also get an upgrade, as now we can get wither skeletons and skeletons to spawn directly inside the portals and immediately be teleported over into the overworld. We also get blazes, magma cubes, and zombified piglins. 
they all drop their respected loot, except Wither Skeletons won't drop their skulls because you need to kill them by player means, as well as the blazes don't drop the blaze rods. You could have a second player over here killing them, or you could stir them up, then hop over here every once in a while and kill them after doing some AFKing. Or you could just send them back to the nether and kill them where you're sitting. Now the developers of Minecraft did say that they will eventually stop most mobs from spawning directly inside of nether portals. We don't know when that's going to be, but in the meantime, make sure to use all my different types of mini underload farms. And you can put as few or as many nether portals, depending on what rates you want and how many materials you have. When at 19 also comes out with the 15th music disc. Let's not forget about my AFK disorder here, which can sort out every single type of disc, even including the brand new one called 5. And this world also comes with my automatic creeper farm and disc producing setup over there. So we took a look at a lot of different farms and machines and now let's talk about what things we cannot obtain and what things aren't farmed. So all the mangrove stuff comes from just the mangrove tree farm. The different types of boats are from their respected trees. We can also get the mud and with the craft we get the other variations. I'll eventually upgrade the farm so it also produces the muddy mangrove roots with it. But for now you can take the normal roots and combine them with the mud and they can be crafted into the muddy mangrove roots. The lights are easy, getting tadpoles in buckets. You can use my fish in a bucket farm, but we're not able to actually get frog spawn as item in survival. You only can get it as a block after the frog produces it. We also can get all the different types of horns. And for the other things, we can get all the different skulk stuff automatically, but there's a few things that come from the ancient cities, including the echo shard and the disc fragment and the two items that they make, which are not renewable. Also, you can't get access to the spawn eggs, so that's creative only. The new reinforced deep slate frame doesn't drop when you mine it in survival and the swift sneak books can only be obtained inside of ancient city chest and are not renewable for the actual mobs you can get the warden with the warden farm the frogs from breeding them with slime and the lays will be able to be duplicated in 1.19.1 now check out this playlist all about other simple farms for your minecraft world or my series on how i'm trying to design a farm for every item in the game of minecraft which comes with this nifty spreadsheet and then see exactly which farm you need to build with my video that goes into how to build it up or a world download so you can see exactly how to build it up if you enjoy my farms and would like to support me, I do have a Patreon. And if you become a Patreon of mine, I will give you tons of different perks, including exclusive like being able to play with me in my series. Thank you all for leaving a like and subscribing, and I'll see you guys next one. Bye-bye!